What's up you guys, it's David here and today I'm going to be showing you guys exactly how to calculate beta using Excel and at the end of the video I'm going to be going into beta a little bit more for beginners but for all you guys that are just here looking to calculate beta using Excel that starts right now. Alright guys welcome to inside my computer and what we're basically going to be doing is creating this file right here that I have on the right. So in order to do that, first, we're going to need to go to Yahoo Finance. And once you're here, you're going to want to pick a stock. I'm going to go with Tesla as I did right here. So let's go ahead and type in Tesla. And we're going to go over to historical data. And here I'm going to change my time period to one year. Done. And then I'm going to change the frequency to weekly. Click apply. That's going to give us all this data. And then we can essentially just click download right here. That gives us one file. And then here we need to go up here and click the S&P 500 historical data change it to one year frequency to weekly click apply and then we're going to click download data now we have these two files I'm going to go ahead and open both of these and if you look some of these dates are messed up but if I just click here it actually fixes all of the dates so boom and then what you're going to want to do is actually create uh, this right here, you're just going to want to get rid of all of the data aside from the adjusted close. So I'm going to go ahead and do that. You guys should get an idea of what I did. So I'm basically just going to take this adjusted close here and copy and paste into here and delete all of this and this. That way we'll just have the adjusted close of the S&P and Tesla. All right, so I've got this set up and in order to calculate beta, we're first going to need the returns between the S&P 500 as well as Tesla. So in order to do that, we're just going to go ahead and click right here and we're going to put equals B2 divided by B3 minus one. We click enter and that's gonna give us that. And we can actually take this and just drag it all the way down. And what you wanna do is make sure you put it to the second to last. So don't go all the way down to here, go right here. That's gonna give us all the data. And then you can just drag that over just a little bit like that and then drag this all the way down like so. And boom, that's gonna give us all of the returns. And if you wanna make sure this is right, you can just go ahead and click at the top, equals C2 divided by C3 minus one. So it's using the exact same formula on the C's. And at this point, you're gonna to wanna to go right here to G2 and type in equals S-L-O-P-E or slope. Then you're gonna to wanna to put in a parentheses. And then now you have this little thing that says known Y's, known X's. Known Y's are gonna be the Tesla returns known X's are going to be the S&P returns. So in order to quickly do this, we're going to go ahead and click here and then highlight all the way down right here and then put a comma space, highlight all of these, scroll back up and then we're going to put a closing parentheses, go ahead and press enter. And that is our beta for Tesla 1.300848. So yeah, that's pretty much how you do beta. It's really not that hard, especially when you have Yahoo Finance providing most of this data here and here. All right, now let's talk about what beta is and how it can be used. So beta is basically the risk or the volatility one asset presents in comparison to another, the other generally being the S&P 500 when it comes to stocks. So that 1.3 beta on Tesla over the last year based on weekly closes means that on average Tesla has gone up 1.3% for every single 1% that the S&P 500 has gone up. And on average, Tesla's gone down 1.3% every 1% that the S&P 500 has gone down. So basically, Tesla is about 30% more volatile than the S&P 500. And a stock with a beta around one basically means that it has about the same risk based on past movement as the overall market. However, if we look at Pfizer stock, the five year one week beta on Pfizer is only about 0.65, which means over the last five years based on weekly closes, Pfizer has had about 35% less volatility or overall risk in comparison to the overall market. And lastly, I wanna talk a little bit about a negative beta. This is pretty rare to find within the market, but this would basically mean that there's a negative correlation between the market and whatever that individual stock is. So if a stock had a negative beta of one over a certain period of time, then that basically means that there's a negative correlation and that essentially whenever the market went up 1%, that stock actually went down 1%. And when the market went down 1%, that stock generally went up 1%. So 
generally, I just like to look at beta, take a glance at it, you know, just kind of get an idea of what kind of risk this stock actually takes. Generally, you won't see me doing a lot of calculations or actually trying to figure out the exact beta for a stock. Normally, I'll just use the five year one already listed on Yahoo Finance or any of the other ones available online. But that's pretty much how to calculate beta and what beta is. Anyway, I hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, be sure to give it a big thumbs up down below. If you guys are new to the channel, consider clicking that subscribe button. And if you guys are already subscribed to the channel, go ahead and click that post notification bell. And right now, Webull is having a promotion where if you guys use the link in the description to open an account and deposit $100 or more, you guys will get two free stocks. The first one valued between five and $500 and the second one valued between 12 and $1,400. So that's basically a 17% return in just one month for tying up $100. You're not going to get that pretty much anywhere. So just, just go ahead and click the link and sign up. It's really simple, really easy. Just, just go ahead and do it. Anyway, I'm, I'm out of here. See you guys.